Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church, Plumas, Manitoba, a congregation of Lutheran Church Canada. Here is our pastor with Sunday's homily. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Amen. Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. Beginning with the very first verse of our text from the Old Testament lesson, the prophet Isaiah will use one of his favorite titles for the everlasting God. He calls him the Holy One. And since the number seven is the number of fullness or completeness, the prophet Isaiah will use this title, the Holy One, to describe the everlasting God a total of seven times. The word holy literally means set apart, separate unto God. It can also mean blessed or righteous or without sin. At the same time, we have to remember that the word holy does not have its origins with humanity. And therefore, the word holy refers to the everlasting God. The everlasting God is the Holy One. And the everlasting God is the source of all holiness for his church and for his people. Furthermore, we cannot fully know the Holy One of God, since the everlasting God is holy. He is different. He is set apart from everything and everyone else. Indeed, he is the Lord, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, Isaiah says. And therefore, Isaiah declares in our text, To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Now, if you were actually going to consider an answer from that rhetorical question, the only possible answer you could provide is nothing. There is absolutely nothing you could possibly use to compare the Holy One with something or someone else, since the comparison fails in all the purposes that belong to it. In fact, we should be very careful and mindful of making any comparisons to the Holy One especially in confirmation, instruction. Martin Luther's small catechism with explanation has a section that tries to describe or explain the characteristics of God, the attributes of God. Question 93 asks the question, Who is God? And the answer, In his word, God has told us that he is spirit, a personal being without a body. He is eternal, without beginning and without end. He is unchangeable, immutable. He is almighty, all-powerful, omnipotent. He is all-knowing, omniscient. He is present everywhere, omnipresent. Holy, he's sinless and hating sin. Just, he's fair and impartial. Faithful, he keeps his promises. Good, he is kind and desiring our welfare. He is merciful, full of pity. He is gracious, so showing undeserved kindness, and he is forgiving. And most of all, he is love. Now, the Holy One, the everlasting God, is all these things and each of these things. But he is even more than these things things, these attributes and characteristics that describe him. Sometimes it is much, much better to describe the Holy One in terms of what may not be said about the perfect attributes or characteristics of God, rather than trying to use positive descriptions of his perfect attributes, since we will never fully know all these attributes and characteristics of God. By trying to define God and what he can do is at times putting a limit on the unlimited eternal God. Take, for example, 
that the eternal one, the holy one, is almighty. He's all powerful. The Latin word there is omnipotent. Now, to some degree or another, we all know what it means to have some kind of power, strength, or might. But when we consider our might, power, or strength, we know that it has limits. I can only bike so far in one day, and I have no idea what it is, it's like to bike without limits in a single day. I can also understand and appreciate the strength and power of a horse, as our psalmist declares. But I cannot fully know that or understand that. An engine has great power and strength. Even your lawnmower has more power than a single horse. But it, too, has its own limits. An engine needs to be fed with fuel. A horse needs to be fed and rested, and an engine can't run 24-7 without resting and cooling down. Some engines are up to 500 horsepower in a vehicle, and a tractor could perhaps have 1,000. All four engines of a Boeing 747 combined have a total of 239,766 horsepower. That's a lot of power to say the least. But again, like a human being, like a horse, the power of an engine or four engines combined have limits. And eventually they too will succumb to the second law of thermodynamics. That is, everything breaks down. Everything fails. Everything grows weary. Now can you see how we can limit the Holy One, the everlasting God, when we try to compare with what we know about power, strength, and might and apply it to the Holy One, the everlasting God? Listen carefully to how the prophet Isaiah describes the Holy One, the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Isaiah says, He does not faint and grow weary. He does not. Isaiah the prophet doesn't describe the Lord, the Holy One, with something positive that we can understand, but rather what he cannot do. He does not faint and grow weary. Now we know what it means to be faint and we know what it means to grow weary and therefore it is better to consider the Holy One, the everlasting God, who does not faint, who does not grow weary. Indeed, God is all-powerful and almighty, but it's much, much better to say that there is nothing God cannot do lest we limit his power, strength, or might. And most importantly, may we we never, ever limit what God in his power can do for us and our salvation. While the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, has power to save and love us, his plans and understanding are indeed unsearchable. Truly, his ways are not our ways and his thoughts not our thoughts, declares the Lord. Indeed, God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. But Isaiah says it in a much better way than that. Isaiah says that God's understanding is unsearchable. There is nothing that our Lord does not know. He cannot learn. His eternal plan of salvation unfolds in ways that we could never comprehend or even understand or imagine. And unlike Israel, the people of God in the past, let us never grow weary in faith toward the Holy One, the everlasting God, and so be reproved or dismissed or delivered over to the devil, the world, and our own sinful passions of the flesh. Because without faith in the Lord, without faith in the Holy One, the everlasting God, there is nothing but darkness and death. 
In this life we walk by faith and not by sight. We hope for the things not seen or the things not quite understood here and now. And to be clear, the object of our faith is our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy One, the everlasting God, the Almighty, the creator of the ends of the earth. The prophet Isaiah says that he gives power to those who are faint. And when we have no might, Isaiah says that he, God, the everlasting God will increase our strength. Now, under the old order of things, today, here and now, we still live with this thing of death and sin that came into the world through the decision of Adam and Eve. And therefore, teenagers, youths, faint and grow weary. Young men fall exhausted. But that's not how it will be in the life of the world to come, in the resurrection of our bodies to life everlasting. The prophet Isaiah says that those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And the power that renews our strength so that we don't grow weary or faint with the consequences of this death and sin that came into the world is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe. And the message of the gospel is quite simple. Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross for all our sins and death, for all our weakness and our fainting. He was also resurrected from the dead in his body to resurrect our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body, never to die again, so that we may have eternal life without being faint or growing weary. Through the prophet Isaiah, we have a future hope and promise of Jesus' resurrection from the dead in his body for us and our salvation. We place our faith, hope, confidence, and trust in the Holy One, the eternal God, Jesus, our Lord, who defeated death in the grave and rose bodily from the dead in order to open the way of everlasting life with him in the resurrection of our bodies. For on the last day he will resurrect our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body, never to die again, so that we never faint again, so that we do not lose strength again, so that we will never be weary again. On the last day, when Jesus appears again to judge the living and the dead, every human being from Adam and Eve to the present will be in their resurrected bodies. And the Lord will separate every human being who is in their resurrected bodies from the believers to the unbelievers. Just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And those on the left, those who are the goats, those who are unbelievers, the people who have resisted the will of the Lord to save them in his death and resurrection from the dead, our Lord says to them, Depart from me, you cursed, into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Eternal fire was not prepared for humanity. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. Some of humanity enters into that eternal fire because they rejected the Lord. They resisted his will to save them in his death and resurrection from the dead. However, the sheep who listen to the voice of the great good shepherd Jesus, who follow Jesus, the great good shepherd of the sheep, the sheep who are on the right, the sheep who place their faith, hope, trust, and confidence in Jesus' death and resurrection to save them, Jesus says, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. 
the saints in Jesus Christ will be made young again. They will, in the words of the prophet Isaiah, be renewed in their strength, never to grow weary. When our Lord Jesus Christ returns at the end of time to resurrect our bodies, never to die again, we will indeed live forever and ever. And we will never have to face the toils and pains, the tribulations and hardships of this mortal life again. That is his promise to us. But until then, as we wait, now and the not yet, we will grow weak and weary. We will faint and we will fall exhausted. But as we wait in this life for the life of the world to come, we wait with the eternal hope and promise of Jesus to completely and totally heal us eternally by the power of his death on the cross for our sins and his glorious resurrection from the dead for our eternal life. Before the last and final day of this earth, our Lord Jesus Christ reminds us also that as we wait, he will never abandon us. He will never leave us as orphans. Our great good shepherd is the shepherd of the sheep and he promises to be with us always, even to the close of the age. He upholds us with his righteous right hand. He strengthens us with his words of promise, reminding us that he is with us to comfort us and to care for us, even as we walk through a deep, dark valley in the shadow of death. When we're at our total limit, when we're weary, when we're spent, when we've fallen, exhausted, the Holy One, the eternal God, Jesus, our Lord, promises to give himself to you in his gospel means of salvation. His word to comfort you. Your baptism into his holy name that claims you as his own, that you are his dear child. And also he gives himself in a very special way in the sacrament of the altar. He gives you his body to eat and his blood to drink, not only to forgive all your sins, but that you may be renewed and strengthened and mounted up with wings like eagles. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.